Okay, in this video we're going to be talking about the Fischer sterification. The Fischer sterification is a reaction where you react a carboxylic acid, so in this case I'm using benzoic acid for my example, with any alcohol. And usually this reaction is most effective with simple alcohols. This reaction is catalyzed by H+, by acid, and here I'm designating that by just writing H+, plus, and you just need a catalytic amount of acid. And obviously the product you're going to form here is an ester. So now we see the product that we form. Um, we've gone from a carboxylic acid to form an ester. So in this reaction, the OH group on our carboxylic acid is going to act as our leaving group. That is going to be replaced by the nucleophile, which is the alcohol. So here this nucleophile um, has an H, obviously that H will be gone, giving us our substitution reaction here, giving our OET. So our OH is replaced by our OET to form the ester shown here. A very simple reaction, works very well. What I want to do now is simply go through the mechanism of this reaction. So the first step in the reaction is we are going to protonate. So I'm going to take that lone pair or take a lone pair on our O and this lone pair or one of these lone pairs is going to attack our H plus and that is a protonation step. So we'll just write a P here to designate a protonation step. And let's draw out the product we form from this. So we still have our benzene ring. Now our oxygen has a new bond to H. And because this oxygen has a has three bonds, that has a plus charge, and now only one lone pair. So there's a couple of resonance structures we can um, draw with this intermediate. So let's draw a few of these resonance structures in. So we can really move the lone pair from the double bond to the O. That'll give us a carbocation, a positive charge on our carbon. Or we could draw another resonance structure. Where the other oxygen forms a double bond and then that O has the positive charge. Okay, so there's really three resonance structures we can draw from our first protonation step. And what we've done here is we've made our carbonyl a much better electrophile. So we see we have a resonance structure where the positive charge is on the carbon and it's shared between these two O's. So this carbon is now ready for attack. So what we can do is draw in our 
ethanol molecule and that is going to serve as our nucleophile so let's draw in these lone pairs now the lone pair can attack the carbon of the carbonyl push these electrons up generating our new intermediate there's a the new bond we formed that's connected to the O, the nucleophilic atom that O had two lone pairs, now it has one lone pair still connected to the H and it's still connected to our ethyl group so instead of writing out the two carbons I'm just going to write ET to represent our ethyl group the other thing that we have to remember is this oxygen now has three bonds therefore this O has a positive charge the next step in our mechanism we are going to sorry I didn't draw the arrow so we call that an attack step we can abbreviate that with an A the next thing we're going to do here is deprotonate so usually when you have acid you have a little bit of um, water so I'm just going to draw a water molecule here with two lone pairs and this water molecule is going to deprotonate that H on our nucleophile to generate our next intermediate and I'll keep the nucleophile in blue again writing OET so we're actually halfway through our mechanism we've added our nucleophile now what we need to do is to eliminate off the OH that we had shown in red here but remember OH is not a good leaving group so what we need to do under acidic conditions is protonate one of these O's we can protonate either one of them because they're exactly the same so let's just pick one I'm just gonna draw in my lone pairs And what we're going to do is protonate one of those OHs. So now this O has three bonds. It only has one lone pair, therefore it has a plus, and we still need our OET. That is the next intermediate that we form. Okay, and now what we've done here is we've turned this into a very good leaving group. So the lone pairs on this oxygen, and again there's two, one set of these lone pairs can come down 
form my double bond and eliminate or kick off that water molecule. So we'll label that E as an elimination step. And let's draw in our intermediate here. So now that oxygen has a double bond to O, that O is still connected to an H. That oxygen only has one lone pair now, and therefore because it has three bonds it has a positive charge. And our nucleophile, our OET, is still attached. The other thing we can do here is just as we did in our first step, we have a couple resonance structures we can draw. So let's draw those in. Instead of having the double bond to O, we can have a single bond to O and H and our OET. And that means we have a positive charge on our carbon atom. And there's one more resonance structure we can draw, so let's draw that in. And in this resonance structure, we're actually going to move those electrons to have a double bond to the OET. So looking at this resonance structure, now the OET only has one lone pair, and therefore that oxygen has a positive charge. Okay, so these are um, two resonance structures you can draw. We only have one step left in the mechanism, and it's pretty clear to see what we have to do to get to our final product. We simply need to deprotonate this protonated carbonyl. Again, I can choose something like a water molecule. When you have acid, you usually have acid and water. So we'll just draw in our water molecule here. That water molecule will now deprotonate that H. The O hydrogen bond will break and become that lone pair on the O getting rid of the positive charge to get us our final product, our ester. So let's just go through the mechanism one more time. The first step is a protonation. Lone pair on the O attacks H plus to generate this intermediate. I can draw three resonance structures like this or for this intermediate. If that bond comes up, I form this resonance structure. If a lone pair on this O comes down, I form that resonance structure. Continuing the mechanism, after we've protonated, we've made a good electrophile. Our alcohol can act as a nucleophile, attack the carbon of the carbonyl, bring these bonds up. That gives us the inter this intermediate here, where my new bond from the O to carbon. The oxygen of my nucleophile is still connected to my carbon chain, the ethyl group, and the hydrogen. Therefore, it has three bonds and a positive charge. Next, the water molecule can come in and deprotonate this species to generate um, this intermediate here. What we need to do next is protonate one of these OH groups. The lone pair attacks H+, plus. that gets us this intermediate here. We've now made this into a very good leaving group. The oxygen has a positive charge, again because it forms three bonds. This lone pair can come down and kick out that water molecule to get this intermediate here. This is one step away from a protonation step. Again, there's two more resonance structures associated with this. Water will come in, deprotonate, put two lone pairs back on this O, generating our ester. Overall, what we've done is our OH was our leaving group. Of course, that had to be protonated. 
our alcohol, our ethanol was our nucleophile, so instead of OH, we now have OET to form our ester. Okay, for homework, what I'd like you to do is work on this problem. Um, I want you to draw the product and draw the mechanism of its formation. So if you notice in this example, we have one end of the molecule has a carboxylic acid, the other end has an alcohol, so there's no need for me to draw an alcohol as a reagent. This is an intramolecular reaction. So what we're going to end up seeing is the OH, the alcohol over here, is going to act as our nucleophile on the carbon of the carbonyl. So please draw the product and go through the mechanism of its formation.